welcome back folks so this is a quick review as quick as quickly as i can make it because you folks know i'm pretty uh, long-winded when it comes down to these videos um as far as this video is concerned i'm just going to talk about the mods uh just the look of it the mods the modifications that i've done to the body uh not so much the rc uh or the rc functions uh, the RC functions, there's a small video. I have a tabletop um, function of the RC, how it moves, uh, the, the RC capabilities of it. If you haven't seen that video uh, and you have the time or the inclination to do so, feel free. It's a fairly short video um, where it shows you how it moves and the other functions that I've been able to incorporate into this. As far as the vehicle is concerned, this is in keeping with Cobra and Desert's kind of war machine factory builds. Um, Cobra and Destro, they make these pretty sci-fi looking vehicles. They've always kept those sci-fi looking vehicles for the Cobra uh, franchise. Um, the G.I. Joe side, you know, they have more conventional vehicles like the Sky Striker, the Mobat. Like real life vehicles mainly, um, that's kind of where the the separation of the two uh, uh, factions are in the GI Joe world, which is way cool. I, I actually I, I very much appreciate that. Um, this vehicle is in keeping with that. The Razorback was a one of those sci-fi looking vehicles um, that is, is just pretty pretty unique in its in its uh, build and the look of it. Um, even uh, when I look at this, I always think of lunar rover, like other world exploration, like a NASA vehicle. Uh, it just has that look. If you put this in a light gray bluish color with some orange highlights and, um, baby blue highlights, then you, 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 it probably would fit in perfectly in a lunar landscape. Um, this vehicle came out in 1989. 1990 i believe it had two years running before it was discontinued uh when you read the blueprints when you read the the back of the box uh it reads like it's a surface attack vehicle um but when i look at it and when i'm kind of reading the description of the of the vehicle um i think they 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 kind of misstepped on that I think this is like an air defense vehicle. Everything about it screams to me air defense. The natural way that those laser cannons sit, they actually point like at a 20 degree angle up towards above the horizon. Um, the capabilities of the turret going 360, uh, turning around all around, and then being able to have that gun point straight up while keeping that uh, the ball turret guy in place like at, at a at a workable angle um that to me screams air defense um the even the rocket pods the rocket pods are in on the blueprints and the description of the box of the vehicle they say that it's a surface to surface um rockets uh they have a they sit on a pylon that does a 180 degree turn uh the look of the rockets the 180 capability of those rockets it it screams sam to me uh, the surface to air missiles um that's what i think this vehicle is uh, the design of it having said that um this vehicle always had some a little bit of a controversy as far as this piece is concerned i call this the hammer it's actually shaped like an l if you could see that um the right configuration for this piece when you're assembling this vehicle is that hammer should be facing up uh, this little l-shaped foot should be facing up uh, because it has some mechanisms back here a stopper and a couple clicking um posts or indentations here that I, that give this vehicle uh its capabilities of becoming that razorback it becomes like when you squeeze it as, in, in an accordion manner then you have that ball turret higher um it it was one of those uh those vehicle features that it had that it was highlighted by this vehicle 
Um, so in order to have that capability, uh, that hammer needs to be sticking up. There are some vehicles out there that actually have this the way I have it because it's in keeping with the silhouette of the vehicle. It makes it look sleeker. It, it, it's in keeping with the aesthetics. The odd thing is that in the art, it shows that hammer pointing down. Um, even even in the back of the of the uh, of the box, you see that as well. In the blueprints, the blueprints tell you to put that hammer sticking uh, sticking up the correct way. But when you look at it, the blueprints show the hammer down, and on this picture with the hammer up. So it's a little bit confusing. And when I was doing some research on this vehicle, I went to Yojo website. And uh, they have some pictures of that, uh, of the blueprints, commercials, cartoons, and arts. Even some pictures of the arcade. And like the blueprints, of, of course, you can see, uh, like I showed you here, it has both ways. And the commercial cartoons and art, uh, it has it facing down, like pointing down like I have it. And then in the arcade, it has it pointing up. So it's kind of like... You can see it in all different configurations. But again, you know, the hammer should be facing up in order for you to um, put it together in the form that it was intended. Uh, the engineer, because there's toy engineers that think about all this stuff, they make that mechanism for it to be able to stay in that accordion feature. If I wanted to put this in an accordion feature, I would have to break that little tab that protects it from, um, from going too far and being able to utilize those little slots that maintain that accordion without me holding it together it just stays there uh, that accordion feature actually allowed for access for that the ball turret the original ball turret um that i have here it was designed not to open from the top but to open access from the bottom so when you had this accordion um feature extended and utilized you had access to that bottom uh, portion of the of this turret, which allowed you to put the figure in there. Very easily done. If you didn't have that accordion thing, then you would have to flip the vehicle over and then get access to the bottom, which you did have access either way. Uh, this vehicle was, had its original wheels out here and it had a lot of ground clearance. That's way cool feature of this, of this vehicle that had a bunch of ground clearance. Um, the wheels to me seemed a little dainty for the tank itself, for the vehicle. So when I saw these tracks, I was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, I ordered this online. And so I always take a gamble when I order these RCs uh, because RCs are infamous for not making things to scale. And then vehicles that don't really exist, you can't really blame them because they don't exist. You know, you kind of go with what looks right. I'll get into the details of the RC later on. But as you can see, it's a good fit. Um, out here, uh, you know, there's some freedoms because this is kind of a sci-fi vehicle. Uh, you, you could take so many freedoms with the base of this vehicle, but I think it looks good. I think it fits with something that an engineer would design. Uh, it, it almost looks like this is was this these tracks were intended for this vehicle, and that's kind of what I want to go for. Even though, again. This is a sci-fi vehicle, so we could take a lot of um, a lot of liberties with the design of this. Um, what I did originally have, I had a vehicle that I wanted to use, which was the Air Hogs, and this was my original. I have a small video about this vehicle and and incorporating these tracks into this. These were massive tracks, and it kind of looked all right. The tracks were a lot more overwhelming to the tank. Um, but that, that's what I was going for uh, originally. I have a small video that shows somewhat of, of my progress. Um, that was about a year and a half, maybe two years that I tried that. Uh, I didn't like the way it looked. The functions of the RC was way off. Uh, so I, I shelved it until I came across these. Um, some of the main mods um, that I've done for this vehicle and that this video highlights is just the body mods. Uh, so one of the biggest ones, of course, you can tell is this turret. Um, this turret, uh, 
it's maybe originally when this vehicle came out uh this turret might have been smooth um but um of course this is a 30 year old 30 plus year old vehicle uh this is vintage um the plastics plastics depending on their exposure to heat uh expose how they're maintained if they're you know maintained in an air conditioner house most of these vehicles have been put in garages and you know in storage bins left to the elements as far as temperatures are concerned so uh, plastics will kind of grow and age in a different manner you might find one where the turret has a good smooth uh mobility to it but the the rc i'm sorry not the rcs but the um the vintage razorbacks that i came across that i have in my collection that turret is hard to maneuver hard to maneuver um at first i thought that maybe uh you know hasbro didn't bevel the bottom where the 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 rings um i thought that they weren't beveled so the 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 actual ball was sitting on a on a sharp surface but when i looked at it it was beveled it wasn't beveled a lot but enough for it to sit and sit comfortably um so i'm thinking that the the sh you know shrinking or expanding or you know what the plastic does after 30 years um it kind of it, it messes that fluidity of the of the intended turret um this turret is it's kind of intended to move around freely you know uh so i did want to get that feature back um i don't necessarily like making something that doesn't necessarily have playability to it and this is one of those biggest things you know big features that was like big and remarkable about the playability of this vehicle uh so i did come across some some material that i had i had picked this up uh yellow tags at the time were 50 percent off so i got this for a dollar 25 at goodwill uh a dollar 25 for this material i didn't have any use for it at the time but when i picked it up but for a dollar 25 i'm always looking for materials i picked it up and threw it in my extra parts cabin or drawer i should say um and i mean i i picked this up way before i even thought of using it here uh that's kind of hoarding tendencies there I always have to keep a check on that. Um, so, but <laughs> uh, I did find it very handy for this. Um, I tried different variations. I tried sanding this and then uh, increasing the bevel that Hasbro had created for that for that ball turret in order for to uh, ride around smoothly. I even uh, went as far as putting uh, silicone grease on on the the connecting points, not the connecting points, but the uh, the points of contact for that ball turret and nothing seemed to work um until i came across this material uh so it's basically when you look at a ball turret and the functions of the ball turret so long as you have one ring above and one ring below that is smaller than the diameter of the ball itself then you're gonna have a, a bracket that allows that ball turret to move freely around those brackets so that's what this material does. Um, if you remove the top ring off, which is that um, the ring that would hold it on, uh, if you remove that top ring, sit the ball turret in there, there's a gap where this ring would be filling that gap. So instead of putting the ring, then I put in the, the silicone uh, tubing in there. Uh, this is flexible. I don't know how long it's going to stay flexible. It all depends on the heat exposure and the elements and how it's going to, you know, shrink or expand during that time frame. So I don't know how long it's going to last. I got plenty, though. I got way more than enough to replace that. Uh, at least 10 years before I start seeing any kind of uh, things that go wrong with that ring. Um but uh, in order for me to do that, I did try different ways. This was my third attempt. I initially just put it around the ring, and then I tried putting seating down the the turret in there. It was there was uh it was uneven. Um, as best as I could, as as much time and care that I took on putting that, 
it was just uneven and it just it wasn't smooth whatsoever um so what i did was i removed that of course and then i put the turret in there and there was that gap in there so i put glue just on the ring the outer ring and then i set the um the tubing in there i uh, let it dry out and it was it worked perfectly there's a tiny gap on one side um i just couldn't help that because uh, that was my end point and then there's a a small connecting point right there that's a little bit off that's a little bit odd um but i mean for the most part it looks it looks fairly well and um it's smooth way smoother than before um it doesn't it, it doesn't uh fall out it, it retains it. it it does the job of the ring um it does it a little a lot better and as you can see this gun i mean everything about this turret and gun screams air defense so that's why i always say it's, it's this is an air defense vehicle um of course the turret uh this turret is one of three that i had uh the plastic was it's it's infamous for scratching uh even the best kept turrets that i've seen out there uh they're they're scratched up uh so i did cut it off i put a little bit of tubing in there in order to kind of give it a frame and maintain that that round look to it um i did put some stickers that make up a screen um that screen needs of course a camera and that's the camera that supposedly feeds into the gun itself uh when you read the schematics for this vehicle it does talk about the radars a lot and also the uh the gun assist radar um so yeah uh the cab inside uh even though this turret uh that that's a pretty well designed turret um and it, it has a lot of detail in this turret but it also has a lot of space that's not being used and the 25th anniversary figures versus the um the original figures the 3.75 figures um the four inch figures are a little bit taller they need a lot more room so i did have to change that i believe it was a thunderhawk uh a thunderhawk vehicle um one of the later vehicles for gi joe line not so popular um gi joe uh vehicles out there but i did have that around and it has some pretty good details uh, i had two joysticks i only kept one there i took that uh, the spare joystick and i put it up front um because this cab uh it, it it's fairly cool um and i i like the the amount of detail they put but for as much detail they put they didn't put any kind of controlling element for this tank uh there's no wheel there's no joystick there wasn't anything so i did put that extra joystick that came with that thunderhawk uh cockpit um and then i put it here i'm not sure if it's called thunderhawk i gotta look that up i'll put it on the description so i did put the joystick here for the for them to have an element and the co-pilot He's strictly in charge of the radar guidance system for the SAMs uh, or the rocket pods. Um, so that's what I did for the cab. Um, I do like to change the color of the cab to make that distinction. Um, if you look at uh, most tanks out there, personnel carriers, um, air defense carrier, anything as far as tanks are concerned, they're going to have an interior that's somewhat similar to this color, uh, like a foam blue, a, form, a foamy green color. Um, I'm sure that there's, you know, psychological um, uh, reasons for that, um, and, you know, making it a safe space, uh, a little bit more uh, of, of comfort. Um, but uh, beyond that, I did change the color scheme and I put in a little bit of felt uh, to bring in that color scheme from the outside to the inside. Um, that way they can and also it just makes it for a good seat, um, you know, the creature comforts for the drivers um and colored some of the dashboard i did have it does have some raised buttons and then also some indentations those indenta indentations that uh should uh, simulate um little buttons i use those as guides for a drill i just took my dremel and i made um little holes 
where those buttons, those indentations were. And then I put a light strip on the bottom on both sides in order for it to have a um, somewhat of a, uh, the cockpit lights in there. All right, so it, it kind of worked out. Um, the RC had two uh, color strip lights, so, and they fit perfectly in there. Um, and then when I put this strip in there, um, and then I had the access from the outside, it kind of looks like, you know, cockpit lights. So that was, that was a, a fun, um, and unexpected, uh, variation that I was able to include. Let me see there. Um, like I said, I'll get into the details of the RC. I, I want to have that RC in front of me. That way you folks can see it, um, and then see the, the pros and cons for that vehicle. Um, the cab lights, the joystick, um, so that's pretty much it for the mods. Um, the bumper is changed. Uh, I know that bumper for this vehicle is one of those items that's usually lost. But the, the bumper, I never liked that bumper. That bumper looks like a, a hammerhead, like a Camaro looking uh, vehicle. Um, it, it just, it looked out of place for the aesthetics of the vehicle. I had this bumper lying around from a different RC um it's very peculiar uh but i think the whole vehicle is peculiar so i think it goes along with the aesthetics uh and then i had these um headlights from a one one ten scale uh vehicle rc uh so these are inverted and i was able to incorporate it with the electronics so beyond that um yeah i think that's pretty much it as far as the mods are concerned and the paint job of course you know the paint job um i talked about different paints uh vallejo um and then this stuff this stuff i get from walmart i use this stuff for big projects uh foam it, it works well uh vallejo um this smaller projects uh highlights um that's what i used uh, for the base coat of this i use spray paint krylon uh desert sand camel paint uh I use that. Uh, the, the darker brown is a hammered uh, Krylon. Um, but the paint, the spray paint, it's big volume real quick. Uh, for the most part, it goes on. It applies nice and evenly. Uh, and then after that, I watered down some black grayish. And then I put it on the original um, lines of the, uh, of the vehicle itself. You know, G.I. Joe has pretty awesome detail for for toys uh to make them kind of you know get that realistic look to them uh i i, I absolutely appreciate that of hasbro uh giving it that you know mechanical look to it the real it's a realism uh it's small details that's where, where that's where it's at uh you can lose those details when you do a a custom paint job so that's why i you know taking a page out of the model makers, uh, they're amazing at bringing out those highlights and make them giving a vehicle realism. Uh, I would definitely suggest you folks, you know, diving into their, into their realm, into their world. And they have some amazing techniques, like really, really amazing stuff. Uh, you put those with the right backdrop, the vehicles that they make and the paint jobs, and you can't tell if it's real or not. And it ends up being like the size of 144 scale, um vehicles that's how much detail they put into that stuff uh a lot of lessons learned from them so definitely look into that but beyond the base code and then i highlight it with a wash um all the lines and then like right here you can see where the wash i placed it and i didn't do a good enough job of going back and i go back and then i use the, the, these colors in order for me to kind of blend in the wash and the original color and kind of bring it out and that's how you get this look this weathered look to it um it's a little bit of time consuming but the good stuff about weathering is that it, you don't have to worry about making it look perfect it's not supposed to be, look perfect you know you don't have to worry about it being the same over here as it is over here you know the exhaust is different on this side so you might have more weathering more more built up gunk on this side than you do on this side um even inside the cab right i've been in some combat vehicles and the interior as much as you want to scrub that interior sometimes it just gets soaked in there um 
it's not far fetched to have a nice clean cat that you think, but the grease and all the grime and all the dust, um, it creates a good amount of of weathering. Uh, it just brings out the character in vehicles, I say. Um, so beyond that, folks, uh, if I skipped over something that I didn't, I or I didn't explain too well, and you have questions about the modifications of this vehicle. Um, not necessarily the RC functions because that's the other video. If you have a question on that, let me know on that video. And in the future video, I'm going to explain a little bit more about the function, the base vehicle that I used, how I got some of the mechanical works. Um, so I'm going to make that video in a couple of days here. Uh, and if I still don't answer questions you might have after that video, then shoot me a message on the YouTube channel on the specific um, uh, the specific thing that you want me to cover and then i'll try to get back to you as soon as i can all right folks hopefully this helped in order for you to get inspired to make your own um and i look forward to seeing your customs out there and it, and uh and remember have fun with them i mean we we have them to have fun some of them we we do make them like shelf queens or shelf kings in order, in order for us to just display them and then and, and look at them and reminisce about our, our childhood. But, uh, but just make sure that you have fun, right? Have fun and uh, enjoy your time out there with the, with those toys.